people as their choice of network. What I would like to say is thank you to all of you. Thank you for the people of the Gambia for um, supporting Gamsel and for being in solidarity with what we say, Yai Borom. The event witnessed the handing over of the Tobaski Rams to the lucky Gamsel winners of this year, Tobaski Bonanza. A number of football clubs from the Greater Banjul area also received an assortment of football materials from Gamsel's officials. Among the beneficiaries are Milan Football Club, Nemo Youth Football Club and Abuko United. All this went home with football jerseys and other items. Momodin Jai, GRTS. Fifteen medical doctors have been undergoing a three-day training in clinical procedures thanks to the United Nations Fund for Population Affairs. The programs, as Umijai tells us, is among a string of efforts by the health ministry to improve maternal trauma and surgical emergency in the health sector. Emergent surgical care, which is a growing concern in the middle-income countries. In the Gambia, access to surgical services is influenced by the concentration of health facilities. The Global Initiative for Emergency and Surgical Care is an essential factor, which was established by the WHO in 2005 to reduce the debt and disability associated with surgical conditions. The Gambia, like many other low-income developing countries, faces challenges in delivery of surgical services. To effectively reduce death and disability from surgical conditions, efforts to improve surgical capacity within the Gambia healthcare system must focus, therefore, on the regional level. Uh, and I think, as this slide shows, here in the Gambia, the regional level is equivalent to the district hospital level. So our major health centers are, in our view, as WHO classified, really as district. It is to that effect medical doctors are trained to solve human resource problems, which are one of the challenges faced by developing countries like the Gambia, and advocate for quality health delivery, which back the role of priorities in the national health policies. These are the doctors who will make it possible to solve the human resource problems, which is one of the challenges to offering surgical universal health coverage in terms of essential and um, emergency surgical care. They are the ones who will be going to the fields to offer this service at the doorstep of the people who need it. The Deputy Permanent Secretary Minister of Health and Social Welfare, Makital, assured his ministry's support to improve health service delivery system and held the relevant stakeholders for putting in effective measures to addressing some of the key challenges. The Gambia is among a few countries which has used this toolkit to map um, available surgical care in the country. This showed that out of 76 health facilities nationwide, only 18 had an operating room, uh, out of which only 12 had an anesthesia machine or anesthetic facility. Seven had a surgeon, and four, only four has an anesthetist. This means that effective surgery was offered only in less than four facilities in this country of almost two million population. UNFPA is always there to provide support and also to work with partnership, both with government and with other UN agencies, to at least provide what it may take to provide this country with the highly skilled um, medical doctors to serve the rural population. Because really, in all honesty, we know that very few, if there are any medical doctors who serve beyond Birkam. And uh, doctors are trained to serve this nation, and definitely they should be. The training is designed to advocate for sustainability of surgical intervention for the health workers at different levels in the country. It is also expected that the training will go a long way in improving the capacity of surgical doctors at the primary health care as these health experts are expected to offer a quality surgical service to the doorsteps of the needy. Omenjai, GRTS. Tragedy has struck at sea 
of a fishing boat capsized, drowning eight people. The incident occurred on Wednesday night after a fisherman reportedly attempted to transport his in-law and seven other unidentified men to Barra after the ferry had already closed. As we hear in this report by Momodu Jalo, only two of the eight victims' bodies have been found and the incident has raised serious questions about safety at the main crossing, especially at the time when people are rushing to cross in time for the Tobaski Feast. Viewers are warned that some of the pictures may be disturbing. It's said to have reportedly happened on Wednesday around 9 in the evening when the captain of a fishing boat received a call from his in-law to help transport him to Barra. An in-law actually called him to say that he should come and pick them here and Banjo. He came with his boat. It's, not, it's, 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 even, it's in fact a small boat. He rode in his boat, came here thinking that he was going to carry only his in-law, but there were seven other persons. Midway on the journey, the boat capsized, drowning the occupants. The captain, however, had to endure a two-hour swimming ordeal to safety before raising the alarm, but the eight others who could not swim perished at sea. A frantic search and rescue operation was mounted and is still ongoing, but three days into the disaster, only these two unidentified bodies have been recovered. This tragic incident comes at a critical time when the rush just in time for the Tawaski is at its highest. The incident also raises some serious questions about safety here as most of these boats lack proper life jackets and are congested. But according to Piero Kujabi, the police in concert with other security agencies will inevitably review security and enforce the regulations in order to protect lives and ensure safety. The police are never relenting on their duty in protection of life and property. We are going day in, day out to make sure that all of these things are put in place before, before even boat owners start operating. We have the maritime here. They are also doing their work. As we are speaking, around us we have a lot of police officers and security personnel who are in civilian clothing. You cannot even tell them from me. Because I'm wearing a uniform, he's wearing a uniform. But there are a whole lot of people out here. But the thing is this, we have to take responsibilities ourselves. However, the police are hoping that this incident will awaken the public on the dangers of traveling on congested boats without life jackets. Before you board this boat, make sure that the boat is big enough to carry you. Look at the number of persons who are boarding the boat and insist on having a life jacket before you even board the boat. These are very important things. The captain is now in police custody, helping authorities in their investigations. According to the PRO, he could face multiple charges, including murder and operating an unlicensed passenger boat. And the police are calling on the public to visit the mortuary in Banjul to help identify the bodies of the victims, as no identity papers were found on them. Meanwhile, the search for the victims continues as the authorities and the public come to terms with the loss of eight young men, six of whom have not yet been recovered from the sea. Mauro Jalo, GRTS. Many people were hopeful that a certain Pakistani activist will back the Nobel Peace Prize this year. She did not win it, but Malala Yousafzai remains an icon beyond her tender years. And Washington politicians pushed push to reach a compromise in a bid to prevent the U.S. from defaulting on its debt. We will be back with those stories and others after the short break. Welcome back. Many people are hoping that the Nobel Peace Prize will go to a young woman, Malala Yousafzai. The Pakistani activist did not win, but she did pick up another international honor earlier this week. 
On Thursday, she was awarded European Union's top human rights prize. Malala, Malala is an outspoken advocate for education in her home country, bringing global attention after a brutal attack by the Taliban last year. This CNN report takes a look at how Pakistan is responding to its homegrown heroine. By the Taliban. But it's not necessarily the shooting, but the teenager's emotive words and courageous stance that has wooed the world. The thought that the bullet would silence us, but they failed. And out of that silence came thousands of voices. In October 2012, Malala.